Getting involved with this project was a dream come true for me. Uh, the Halo universe is ridiculously cool. It's something I've been attracted to and sort of in love with since it first uh, appeared uh, 10 years ago. And so when I got a call about this project, it was kind of a pinch me moment. I was like, that's not even a question. I'll do anything to be part of this project. This is amazing. It's made for web content primarily, which is a really interesting sort of um, new world for filmmakers, and it's really picked up momentum in the last couple of years. I like it because there's, in some ways, there's no rules, um, and you can kind of work however you think is best for the material. You're not hitting a specific time. You're not, you know, having to sort of cater to pre-existing notions. It's um, it's uncharted territory, so you can come up with a story and then put it in the framework that supports it the best way, which is really cool. The last Halo game, or Halo 3, ends with the sort of, you know, uh, infamous cliffhanger, uh, which anybody who plays the games knows, leaves Chief sort of floating through space uh, in cryosleep, and the last words he gives to Cortana are, wake me when you need me. Um, and in the very last sort of frames of that game, uh, you see that the Forward Unto Dawn, the crippled ship that he's on by himself, is heading towards this sort of mysterious, like, glowing portal planet thing. And it's just this, like, what the is that moment that left everybody, like, dying to find out more. And then Halo 4 picks up from there and, you know, takes you on a new adventure that people will obviously uh, learn about this fall. But we get to kind of tell the in-between of those two things. So as somebody who was, like, incredibly riveted slash frustrated by that cliffhanger, it's really cool to be able to pick up and, and keep going with it. Our story centers around a cadet named Lasky, who's this sort of um, disenfranchised, uh, unwilling kid who really doesn't see the merit in the system he's being brought up under and is resisting kind of this, what he believes to be, you know, sort of brainwashing. Um, and no sooner do we sort of, like, get to know him than the school is uh, suddenly under attack by aliens, and these kids are forced to defend themselves uh, in this, you know, crazy sort of onslaught that they never imagined, and uh, obviously, sort of later in the story, we receive help from the biggest hero in the Halo world, Chief. So Lasky is our main character, and his sort of love interest sidekick is a girl named Kyler, who is um, uh, this beautiful, headstrong girl who's sort of been brought up under um, under a bunch of tragedy that sort of crystallized her view on why she thinks the UNSC is right and why the cause that she's being trained for is absolutely correct. Um, and that puts her sort of at odds with Lasky's system of beliefs and they have sort of a friendly uh, running argument um, that keeps the two of them sort of at each other's throats but also engaged with each other. And then we have April, who's the squad leader for the cadets and she's sort of a hard ass, uh, robotic, you know, by the book kind of leader who over the course of the story is sort of thrown into a crazy situation and, and has to kind of find her humanity. Well, Tom was like an amazing discovery for us. He's an actor out of Australia who's a super young guy but has been doing a lot over there um, in the TV world and our casting director put him in front of us and everybody sort of immediately said like this is our Lasky. Um, he's got a really nice sort of combination of being um, a relatable guy, but also sort of embodying that outcast spirit. So um, there's something about him that just really clicked beautifully with this movie. Well, she's an amazing contradiction because she is the sweetest girl next door, but she's also, I mean, in person, she's whip smart and incredibly hardworking. So she actually sort of represents the character that she had to play, which is on the one hand, super approachable and um, somebody you want to hang out with. On the other hand, like a diehard, well-trained, hardworking, um, kick-ass soldier. Master Chief is played by Daniel Cudmore, who is probably the only uh, stunt person slash actor who is nearly seven feet tall in the world. At least he's the only one that I know of. Um, and he's amazing. He, we basically put him in this 45, 50 pound suit every day, which is the hottest, sweltering, sweatiest, uh, most difficult suit to inhabit, and asked him to do these sort of like deftifying, 
stunts and, and physical stuff while acting as a central character with the kids, and he did it all with flying colors. Um, so he's an amazing asset to us. One of the biggest, uh, coolest things about the Halo universe, I think, is that you never see Master Chief's face. No one ever has, and um, who knows if we ever will. So basically, we needed to hire an actor who could represent the sort of physicality and the body acting of Master Chief. Um, without being able to use sort of the classic actor toolkit, which is their face. Um, so it was a tough challenge, but he did it amazingly. He, he really sort of was able to emote inside of that suit uh, behind a gold visor, despite not having, you know, not being able to see him. Fans can expect everything they love about the series, and hopefully, hopefully more. Our goal was to, to bring Master Chief into the flesh, as it were. It's our first significant sort of live action Master Chief. Um, and give everybody exactly what they are signing up for. But we also sort of, but we also wanted to make sure that this is a series that connects people to characters and story and emotion, um, because that's what real human beings and actors can do that is much more difficult to do inside the framework of a video game. The team at 343 um, was adamant about wanting us to make this emotional and character driven. Um, you know, the action is all there, the, the special effects, the stunts, the aliens, they're all there, but they said from the very beginning that unless uh, the audiences care about who they're watching, it doesn't matter, and that's been sort of our guiding principle. I think we designed the series to play to two different audiences equally well, and hopefully we'll be able to pull it off. We want the Halo fans to feel like we have given them everything they wanted and more, uh, fleshed out the Halo world in a, in a new area and a new uh, way, given them a new set of characters that they, can, that they can fold into all of their existing sort of Halo lore and fall in love with just as much as they have. Um, and that we've launched them into Halo 4 in a way that gets them revved up and excited about what's to come for not just Halo 4, but for the next um, 10 years of the franchise. That's been sort of our goal. For people who don't know anything about Halo, we also wanted to make a series that's compelling, that's engaging, um, that's character-driven and pulls people in um, to a world they may not have known and, and, and shows them what those of us who have loved it forever love about it. It's hard to say. I mean, uh, I, a lot of it could be the fact that you've never actually really seen his face. Um, at the same time, Microsoft and I guess Bungie at the time built such a cool character that everyone's kind of just, you know, just really likes him. I'm, you know, there's, a, there's a numerous different there's numerous different reasons for why he has sort of become this cult hero, but I mean, to, for me to be able to put my finger on just one, it's it's pretty tough. Um, I just think he's a badass character, so it's cool enough for me. This character, Thomas Lasky, who's a military cadet who's really kind of fighting with the idea of moving forward in the military. I believe his one of his parents is very high up ranking officer in the military and he's just he's just kind of, you know, fighting with his own beliefs and what he thinks he should do and what the military is. And so it's this this story of that evolving with him training and them trying to build him into um, you know, a soldier and to move up in the ranks and he's kind of pushing away against that and next thing you know there's a massive attack on on the planet and and the military base and all the cadets and the majority of them were wiped out and there's only a small group uh, of cadets left um, and Master Chief happens to come down and essentially try and save whatever survivors are left He's great. Uh, the, the great thing is that they're all extremely strong actors, but they're also physical actors. They're, they're actors who can, who can take a bit of a licking, who can run around, who can jump off some things, and who can make it look good. I mean, uh, that's also a tough thing sometimes, but you know, they've been trained really, really well by uh, our stunt coordinator, James Bamford. And, um, and so, yeah, it's just, it's a lot of fun to have these young, well, I mean, relatively young actors um, who are bringing their A-game. Uh, but at the same time can 
can mix it up a little bit. So he's, a, he's been great and the rest of them have been, been awesome. They had a short amount of time and uh, they just went to town on this thing and you know, I think it was a few weeks later I go back down there and try on this sort of raw, um, not unpainted pieces that, that are constantly getting tweaked but put it on it was just so cool. It was so badass. And, and then and then they paint it and then they put it all together and then you put it on for the first time and the, you've got this mask I think was tinted and done by Oakley and it's just so cool once it's all put together and you can't help but kind of have that like swagger as you walk around in the thing. So uh, hats off to those guys for making such a cool product. This suit specifically designed just for me. Uh, so in that aspect, it's quite comfortable and, it, and I can move in it. But at the end of the day, it's still large amounts of rubber and, and plastics and uh, fiberglass and everything like that. And so it was, I think we weighed in at about 60 pounds heavier than I am. So it just sort of, it's just a little more effort in, in everything that I kind of do just to move. But at the end of the day, it's, it's not that bad. First and foremost, I think you just want them to be happy with all of the work and the effort that everyone put forth and and hope that this sort of story that has been written and built and acted and put together is going to be this great entertaining piece that can stand on its own as as you know as, as a movie essentially and and I uh, hope they enjoy just the way it evolves into the Halo universe and the story and and for me I just hope that people dig the Master Chief you know Lasky is uh, I, uh, I found out he's actually a key role in the production um, in, in the project he uh, is basically uh, one of the leads in the, in in what we're doing here the story kind of centers on him and he's kind of he's halfway through his his year at the, at the academy and it's all about him trying to fit in with with what's being taught and what's being fed to him in class and on the uh, in training you know in, in all the training sessions and and he is having quite a hard time coming to terms with what he's actually learning and what he's led to believe is 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 right so there is a a, a big collision and, and a you know, they, they, he's not really clicking with everything he's being fed. So the story is kind of focusing on him and how he's trying to, you know, trying his hardest to work out what is right and what he's believing. And, you know, I really did relate to him. I found everybody, a lot of uh, teenagers themselves can relate to the character. Basically, they've just taken a teenager from the real world and put him a couple of hundred years in the future. It's uh, all about his life and kind of, um, you know, trying to fit in and trying to work out where you know where your your place in this world and and you know what am I going to do when I'm older it's that kind of that's what this story is kind of focusing on it's that uh, uh, coming of age story so I kind of read it and I was like yep yeah, I've been there I'm sure a lot of our viewers have been there as well so that's uh, it's just great to be part of something like this you know Kyla is uh, she's one of um, she's one of Thomas Lasky's friends uh, so to speak they uh, have a bit of a, they have this kind of thing going where um, she, they both have different um, ways of looking at what's happening here at the, at the academy. So she agrees with the teachings, Lasky's not really agreeing with them, and uh, even though they have this kind of flirtatious kind of back and forth bickering, um, it becomes this kind of little tradition for them to kind of argue quite a bit about who's right and who's wrong, trying to prove each other wrong and right. Anna is great. Anna Popwell is awesome. We get along really well. She'll probably deny that, but I think we get along really well. She thinks I pick on her a lot. Um, but Anna's very experienced. She's very professional, and uh, I've learned quite a bit from her on this on this job, which is which is great. Daniel's a big dude. He, uh, I think he, uh, I think they made this this role for him. Uh, yeah, he's a tall guy. I actually remember when we first got to meet him, and everyone's kind of like. This guy is huge, like, this guy is really big, you know, like I'm 5'9", this guy is like over six foot and I'm just going like, this guy's huge and he's like, yeah, I'm tall. And Kat, I remember Kat looking up at him going, gee, you're so tall. Like, and everyone's just cracking up and she was just obsessed with the fact that there was this guy over six foot in the room. So, yeah, he was a great guy though, he's, uh, he's a lot of fun. On set, he comes in, you know, in the morning, he's like, good morning, okay, first setup. Let's do it. You do like one rehearsal. Let's just shoot it. You know, I trust the actors. Let's just do it. We'll shoot it, and 
you know, I got to see just quietly, I got to see some of the, just you know, a few things here and there, and everything just looks sick. Like everything's turned out so well, um, and his other projects that he worked on, like H Plus and stuff, everything just looks great. He's, he's a, I can't wait to see you know more of his stuff. The Halo franchise is so big, and I think people underestimate sometimes how how big it is. Um, I think personally for me, I think I would love for the fans to accept what we're doing here and, and you know what we've been working on. Um, we're not, I think maybe they're expecting something and they're not gonna, I think, I think what we're doing here is we're actually we're making something that is gonna be different to what these guys are expecting. They see Master Chief maybe, you know, from a leaked photograph and they might think that the entire story is gonna revolve around him. When uh, in actual fact, we're, we're shooting something that takes place quite before the next Halo game. So. I think it's going to be great. People haven't really seen anything like this with Halo before. Um, I don't think we've ever really had brought, you know, emotion to the story and drama and people's, you know, real lives and growing up. So I think, uh, I think for me, I would love people just to watch it and, and enjoy it. Kyla is a really good soldier, um, partly because of her upbringing. She's grown up in an insurrectionist war zone and she's very used to and aware of and motivated by that conflict, I think. Um, she's also like physically capable and pretty badass, but I think it's that like mental drive that she has that she totally believes in the UNSC cause. She's really committed to being at Corbulo. She really wants to be the best. Um, that means that she does get the fastest drill times and uh, is pretty in control during training exercises. Uh, so yeah, she's a pretty together cadet. This story is about a group of cadets at the UNSC Military Academy, Corbulo, and it takes place just sort of around the start of conflict with the Covenant. Um, these cadets are just training to fight insurrectionists. They don't know about aliens and things. And uh, it's kind of about their group and individual journeys when the war with the Covenant breaks out, um, their encounter with Master Chief, and their race for survival as their planet is destroyed. <laughs> Master Chief is this inspirational super soldier and it's a, a really, I mean, he's a really important character in the context of Halo because I think he's also a character that fans feel they have a lot of ownership of. I think I'm right in saying that you can play Master Chief, so it's very important that he's like an everyman character at the same time as being freaking awesome. Daniel's so nice and he's so tolerant because he really has a pretty uncomfortable job to do in that suit. Um, I mean, physically, he's a pretty impressive guy and all the cadets, all the actors playing the cadets are quite short, so standing next to him, we really look teeny. He's pretty tall. Uh, I mean, he, what he's doing in this is that he's an incredibly talented physical actor. He's having to do a lot of stunts and the way that he moves is very important. I think one of the things I like most about the way he works is that he's a very good balance between being open and knowing exactly what he wants. So if you come in and say, please can we change this line, please can I try this, he's totally up for it. But when you're under pressure and you need to get something done and you say, what do you want, he'll give you a very specific and straight answer, um, which is great, which is uh, exactly how I like to work, so it's great.